The Arbital of Magic, the second septenary of aphorisms. Aphorism 8. Even as the Scriptures testifies that God appoints names to things or persons, and also with them hath distributed certain powers and offices out of his treasures, so the characters and names of stars have not any power by reason of their figure or pronunciation, but by reason of the virtue or office which God hath ordained by nature either to such a name or character. For there is no power either in heaven or in earth or hell which doth not descend from God, and without his permission they can neither give or draw forth into any action any thing that they have. Aphorism 9 That is the chiefest wisdom which is from God, and next that which is in spiritual creatures, afterward in corporal creatures, fourthly in nature and natural things. The spirits that are apostate and reserved to the last judgment do follow these after a long interval. Sixthly, the ministers of punishments in hell and the obedient unto God. Seventh, the pygmies do not possess the lowest place and they who inhabit in elements and elementary things. It is convenient, therefore, to know and discern all differences of the wisdom of the Creator and the creatures, that it may be certainly manifest unto us, what we ought to assume to our use of every thing, and that we may know in truth how and when what manner that may be done. For truly every creature is ordained for some profitable end to humane nature, and for the service thereof, as the Holy Scriptures, reason, and experience do testify. Aphorism 10. God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, in the Holy Scriptures proposes Himself to have an eye over us, and as a tender Father which loves His children. He teaches us what is profitable and what is not, what we are to avoid and what we are to embrace. Then He allures us to obedience with great promises of corporal and eternal benefits, and deters us with threatening of punishment from those things which are not profitable for us. Turn over therefore with thy hand both night and day those holy writings, that thou may be happy in things present and blessed in all eternity. Do this, and thou shalt live, which the holy book have taught thee. Aphorism 11 A number of four is Pythagorean, and the first quadrate, therefore, here let us place the foundation of all wisdom, after the wisdom of God revealed in the Holy Scriptures, and to the considerations proposed in nature. Appoint, therefore, to him who solely depends upon God the wisdom of every creature to serve and obey him. Nolens volens, willing or unwilling. And in this the omnipotence of God shines forth. It consists, therefore, in this, that we will discern the creatures with service from those that are unwilling, and that we may learn how to accommodate the wisdom and offices of every creature unto ourselves. This art is not delivered, but divinely. Under whom God will, he reveals his secrets, but to whom he will not bestow anything out of his treasuries, that person shall attain to nothing without the will of God. Therefore we ought to desire glory from God alone, which will mercifully impart those things unto us. For he who hath given us his Son, and commanded us to pray for his Holy Spirit, how much more will he subject unto us the whole creature, and things visible and invisible? Whatsoever ye ask, ye shall receive. Beware that ye do not abuse the gifts of God, and all things shall work together unto you for your salvation. And before all things be watchful in this that your names be written in heaven. This is more light, that the spirits be obedient unto you, as Christ admonishes. Aphorism 12 In the Acts of the Apostles, the Spirit saith unto Peter after the vision, Go down, and doubt not, but I have sent them, when he was sent for from Cornelius the centurion, after this manner, in vocal words, are all disciplines delivered, 
by the holy angels of God, as it appears out of the monuments of the Egyptians. And these things afterward were vitiated and corrupted with humane opinions, and by the instigation of evil spirits, who sow tares among the children of disobedience, as it is manifest out of St. Paul and Hermes Trismegistus. There is no other manner of restoring these arts than by the doctrine of the Holy Spirits of God, because true faith comes by hearing. But because thou may be certain of the truth, and may not doubt whether the spirits that speak with thee do declare things true or false, let it only depend upon thy faith in God, that thou mayest say with Paul, I know on whom I trust. If no sparrow can fall to the ground without the will of the Father which is in heaven, how much more will not God suffer thee to be deceived, O thou of little faith, if thou depend wholly upon God and adhere only to him? Aphorism 13 The Lord lives, and all things which live do live in him, and he is truly God, who hath given unto all things, that they be that which they are. And by his word alone, through his Son, hath produced all things out of nothing, which are in being. He calls all the stars, and all the host of the heavens by their names. He therefore knows the true strength and nature of things, the order and policy of every creature, visible and invisible, to whom God hath revealed the names of his creatures. It remains also that he receives power from God, to extract the virtues in nature, and hidden secrets of the creature, and to produce their power into action out of darkness into night. Thy scope, therefore, ought to be, that thou have the names of the spirits, that is, their powers and offices, and how they are subjected and appointed by God to minister unto thee, even as Raphael was sent to Tobias, that he should heal his father, and deliver his son from danger, and bring him to a wife. So Michael, the fortitude of God, governs the people of God. Gabriel, the messenger of God, was sent to Daniel, Mary and Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. And he shall be given to thee that desires him, who will teach thee whatsoever thy soul shall desire in the nature of things. His ministry you shall use with trembling and fear of thy Creator, Redeemer and Sanctifier, that is to say, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And do not let thou slip any occasion of learning, and be vigilant in thy calling, and thou shalt want nothing that is necessary for thee. Aphorism 14 Thy soul lives forever, through him that hath created thee. Call therefore upon the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. This thou shalt do, if thou wilt perform that end for that which thou art ordained by God, and what thou owest to God and to thy neighbor. God requires of thee a mind, that thou should honor his Son, and keep the words of his Father in thy heart. If thou honor him, thou hast done the will of thy Father which is in heaven. To thy neighbor thou owest offices of humanity, and that thou draw all men that come to thee to honor the Son. This is the law and the prophets. In temporal things thou ought to call upon God as a Father, that he would give unto thee all necessities of this life, and thou ought to help thy neighbor with the gifts which God bestows upon thee, whether they be spiritual or corporeal. Therefore thou shalt pray this, O Lord of heaven and earth, Creator and Maker of all things, visible and invisible. I, though unworthy by thy assistance, call upon thee, through the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, that thou wilt give unto me the Holy Spirit, to direct me in thy truth unto all good. Amen. Because I earnestly desire perfectly to know the arts of this life, and such things as are necessary for us, which are so overwhelmed in darkness and polluted with infinite humane opinions that I of my own power can attain to no knowledge in them unless thou teach it to me. Grant me, therefore, one of thy spirits, who may teach me those things which thou would have me to know and learn, to thy praise and glory and the profit of our neighbor. 
Give me also an apt and teachable heart, that I may easily understand those things which thou shalt teach me, and may hide them in my understanding, that I may bring them forth as out of thy inexhaustible treasure to all necessary uses. And give me grace, that I may use such thy gifts humbly, with fear and trembling, through our Lord Jesus Christ, with thy Holy Spirit. Amen. End of the Second Septenary